And welcome back. Well, when a couple gets a divorce, it's always tough. But if you own a small business, it can be even trickier. So today, the most important things to consider before you decide what to do with your business. Jeff Hughes is the CEO of Sterling Law Offices. Good morning to you, Jeff. Good morning, Tiffany. Thanks for joining me. You know, nobody likes to talk about divorce, but I know this is something that you guys do very well is help counsel people through the really tricky parts of things. And if you have a family business and you are uh, considering a divorce or you're going through a divorce, it can add a whole new level of trickiness to it, right? What are some of the things that you think needs to be understood by both parties? Well, first off, yeah, it does add more than a few layers of trickiness to a divorce because it, it the co complication of businesses, employees, and financials and all that come into play that you don't have in your, quote, typical divorce case. But uh, the, the first consideration, I would encourage anyone that's considering a divorce that there's a business involved, whether you are the primary spouse that's running the business or operating it, or the other spouses, is just prepare yourself emotionally and mentally for what that grueling process is going to be. Because if you are the spouse that's running the business and you're going through divorce, you're going to be highly distracted as you go through that. Absolutely. I can imagine because you're you're trying to run the business, you're also trying to go through things. I'm assuming a lot of this um, comes down to the fact they didn't have a prenup. Um, but oftentimes I feel like most couples when they're married at some point potentially start to run the business together. Oftentimes one comes into the business. What happens then? Well, yeah, I mean, from a standpoint of the prenup that you just mentioned, that would sort of certainly protect the business or give a good chance to protect the business from the other spouse getting it upon a divorce. But like you said, so many folks get married and maybe one spouse is operating the business, the other, well, other one comes in and assists, and they're both involved. And it's a marital asset at that point. So at the time of divorce, our laws in Wisconsin say with two uh, pretty big exceptions, everything is to be divided 50-50. So that business essentially is an asset. And now you got to value that asset. So that's where the real contest can come up. Absolutely. When you're starting to value the business. Real quick, I just want to take a, hair, a, a step back because I, I want you to just define what does it mean when you say you have to decide if it's a business or does one party own their own job? Yeah, so um, with our economy today being what it is, where there's a lot of folks that are um, independent contractors or consultants, they all have a business. Just like you would picture someone like Cousin Subs that runs a Cousin Subs franchise, for example, they have a business. Maybe they've got 30 or 40 employees and the government recognizes that sub shop as a business. Well, someone who's a private contractor or an independent consultant and it's just them, the IRS considers that a business as well. But the big difference is at the time of divorce, there's a valuation. So that independent consultant, well, who's going to buy that business? Because that business is the person. So essentially, that consultant owns the business, whereas the franchise owner, they can sell that to, to another franchisee or, or something like that or sell it back to the, to the big company. So the IRS looks at all of those as businesses. So um, a lot of folks say, well, I have my own business. And they do. But when it comes to divorce, they really don't have anything of value there because they are the value of that particular business. They left, the business doesn't exist anymore. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so when you're when you're trying to consider the right thing to do with the business, you said, you know, you have to consider the value. So how do you start? What what are the next steps there that you should consider when you're thinking of the right thing to do? Well, if you're contemplating a divorce and there's a business involved, um, and you're looking for counsel, because this is one of the few, we don't have a lot of specialties in, in family law, um, but when it comes to a business, definitely it's very important that you vet your attorney that you're gonna be working with really well and really look for a team who understands business. Because I tell you this, Tiffany, um, just because there's a lawyer, that doesn't mean they know squat about how to run a business or how to operate a business. What I believe is that, and I don't mean to impugn my whole, all my colleagues in my profession here, but you know, lawyers are just a tiny bit better at running a business than a doctor would be. And that's a pretty low standard. So these are professionals that are highly skilled and good at what they do, but not necessarily running a business. So when you're looking for counsel, going through divorce, vet that person really well, help make sure they have a full understanding of how businesses operate, how cash flow operates, how the financials inter all interplay with each other, because it's going to be real important that they understand all of those dynamics as they go advocate and fight for you. And let me tell you one other thing too, Tiffany, this is like what people don't consider is that judges, 
okay, a lot of judges, frankly, don't really understand the the taxation relative to businesses, how that all works, because you know what those judges used to be? Lawyers, right? <laughs> and so they were running their practice and doing, I'm sure, an amazing job of running their practice, or else they wouldn't be a judge. So now they become a judge. That doesn't mean they all of a sudden have all this new acquired skill on how to value businesses and look at them and understand how that works from a division standpoint, a valuation standpoint at the time of divorce. That, I mean, it's so much to consider. I'm glad you highlighted that because I think it's so important that someone knows like where you feel like one of your best specialties is in terms of helping people. I think that that's important to be able to kind of tout your own, you know, toot your own horn in that aspect because nobody else is going to do it for you. You got to tell people. So I think it's wonderful that, that if somebody's going through, especially this situation within divorce, and I know you work with all of them, but that especially if there's a family business or a business involved, that this is one thing that you pride yourself on. So thank you so much for joining us this morning again, Jeff. It was really great to see you. Yeah, thank you, Tiffany. Absolutely. And Sterling Law Offices is a proud sponsor of TMJ4's ongoing feature, We're Open. To learn more about Sterling, visit them online at sterlinglawyers.com.